Hey, all Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. Well, coming up, we got an unboxing from Fear Not Tarantulas. Got a bunch of cool stuff here, including some new Orisa species and some Lephistius species. And I apologize in advance as I was making this video. I was really, really tired, and I think I kept mispronouncing Lephistius as Lephistus. We'll just pretend like I was saying it correctly the whole time. But again, with these unboxing videos, it's tough because obviously you have to receive the boxes on a weekday, which means after coming home from work, both Billy and I work obviously full time, we have to go up to the tarantula room and do these and try to bring the energy. So it can be difficult at times, but I think we had a fun one with this one. So I'm really excited about it because A, I was, as I mentioned earlier, I did a podcast on velvet spiders. I have a rhesus walking area that I've been growing up for a couple of years. And I talked about the fact that I plan on getting some more in. Well, these are the ones I was talking about. So really excited about those. And the Lephistius species is a genus of spiders that I discovered a couple of years ago when I got a book for Christmas on different spider species across the world, was immediately enamored with them. So really excited to add some of these to my collection, watch them grow, and hopefully get some hunting videos of them. Because my buddy Basin79 has had them for quite a while, and I have him on Instagram. He's always posting these amazing videos of these guys jumping out, grabbing prey, lightning speed, going back in, and then he slows it down so you can actually see how quick they're moving, which is fantastic. I doubt I'll get anything anywhere near that impressive, but it'll be nice to get some feeding photos and videos of them nonetheless. So enough of me talking. Let's take a look at this haul from Fear Not Tarantulas. All right. So it's a Tuesday afternoon. I had a long day of work. Billy's had a long day of work. We're going to do a really low energy unboxing. So just a heads up, this probably isn't going to be an overly long one, but just I know people like seeing what I get. So we're going to go ahead and open up the box and then get some of these critters rehoused probably on camera, but not all of them on camera because again, it's Tuesday and we're tired. We want to sit down. We're old. <laughs> the other thing, we're not young anymore. All right, so we got our directions. Now I've got some stuff coming in here, which will be obvious. I don't know why I do this. I always forget that once you put the title up, it kind of gives away everything you get. And it's probably going to say Lephista species. Um, Caden will probably love that. So Caden will, grandkid will absolutely love that. It confused me for a minute because I'm like, oh my God, somebody shoved a dead hamster in here. <laughs> like I thought we were on good terms. <clears throat> Goodie bag, awesome. All right, what what do we have here? Holy jeez. All right, so kick it off. We have... Aresis Balkanicus, Turkish Velvet, Turkish Velvet. Oh, there it is right there. And I don't know if I'll show the rehousings on these. Originally, I set one up in something rather, I, I won't say it was complicated, but it had substrate, it had some moss, all kinds of good stuff. And then I was on Tom Patterson's site, and he says the best way to keep them is just put some dry paper towel in there, and they kind of web up around the paper. You scrunch it up, and they can go in there. And I kind of like that idea because the hardest – Thing about keeping these guys is being able to figure out where they were. I have a rhesus walking area that I raised up and it started off super tiny and half the time I couldn't tell where the heck the thing was and was scared that it was not going to survive. Although I might be able to just keep them in these. This is a rhesus rufi capillus, the Italian velvet spider. And I, are you seeing it? You're zooming in. Don't see where he or she is. Might be in the cap. He in the cap? Eh, in there somewhere. I might just keep them in what they're in, honestly, as long as that moss is dry. And then we have... So, a heads up, I did a podcast uh, a little while ago talking about velvet spiders and how I avoided them for a while. I kind of made fun of myself during the podcast for being an idiot, but just they were everywhere. They just weren't interesting me and I avoided them for a while. And holy geez, Lephistus Jerusalem. That's huge. Yeah, we're going to have to oh find another gosh. container for that one. That is a big this is these are the ones that I was going nuts for because a couple of years ago for Christmas I got a book all about different uh, species of spiders and I saw the armored trapdoor spiders and thought they were the coolest looking things ever. And then my buddy Basin, I think it's Basin seventy nine. There's a number afterwards. He posts up videos all the time of his feeding in like fast motion and slow motion, and they just look so darn cool. So really excited to finally get some of these in my collection. I will say with the Tom's Big Spider thing, we're going on 10 years with this. 
It's obviously focused on tarantulas for many, many years, but I am branching out and getting more into my gillomorphs and true spiders. So very excited to have it. My Lord. That is a big, big, beautiful armored spider. Whew. All right. This is a ball of, I feel like there's something in here, but it's a pink rubber ducky. Stick that one right up there. Um, right. Starting to think that my enclosures that I set up for those armored spiders might not be sufficient. Oh, a rhesus walkinary. And there's a little, little dude right down in there. I have another one that I'm hoping is a female that I've been raising. What was this, like two years now, two and a half years? It's still small, but flipping adorable. So anyway, as I was saying, some people took offense to the fact that apparently they thought I was making fun of the velvet spiders, which I wasn't. I was trying to make fun of myself. So hopefully this will help prove to the folks that came over to my channel and scolded me for not liking velvet spiders that maybe they'll actually just go listen to the podcast and hear what I said. Yeah. Because I love <laughs> when people trim stuff out and selectively pick things that basically encourage their narrative. Okay, there we go. This one will be good. Comes with trap door. Huh? Lephistus or Nottis, orange armored trap door. Blame Emma for labels. <laughs> <laughs> she must have printed up the wrong one or something. That's okay, Emma. It's all good. And there it is right there. Gorgeous little one. Don't worry about getting it. I'm going to probably drag these out so you can see them a little bit. And it's good that they're on the moss because I can drop the moss in there. At least we'll be able to put two of them in. The other one is a bit larger than I was expecting. Oh, yeah. Lephistus species Kaldwang comes with trapdoor. Uh, don't see it, but we'll get it open afterwards. It's probably behind here. I think I see a leg in there. Yeah, right in there, I think. So get that one out afterwards. Okay, yeah, I know what this is. Sorry if this is in an unpacking video, Tom. Love, Evan. Love you too, Evan. Scopendra Galapagensis, dark. It is an unpacking video. And I'm so excited. I have one of these already that actually molted. It's come back out from the molt. And I put in a little piece of chicken last night or two nights ago. And I was worried that I wasn't going to be able to tell if it ate or not because it was down under the ground. And when I came up yesterday, it had grabbed not only the piece of chicken, but the entire dish I had for it and pulled it over to its little burrow and was eating. So maybe I'll flash a terrible picture of that up. So awesome selection of things here, things I am very, very excited about. Again, I've been dying to get some more of the velvet spiders. I talked about my podcast a while back that I planned on getting more. So we've got more here. And the Lephista species I've been dying to get for quite some time. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut here for a moment. I'm going to get out the enclosures that are going to work. I think the two smaller Lephista species, what I have set up for them will work great. The other one, I'm probably going to have to go bigger. And I hope I mix, I mix up special dirt for this. And I'm not sure I'm going to have enough. So it's not going to matter to you folks. When you come back, it'll be a second. We'll have everything prepared. But we're going to take a break for a second, get things set up. And then we'll do the housings of some of these guys. All right. So we paused a minute so that I could set up a larger cage for the black armored trapdoor spider, Lephistus gendrin. Gendrin. This is what I have set up for it. This is, I believe, one of the original Herp Cult ones, which were one of the ones that actually started these whole acrylic ones. I bought this one a few years ago, but I had it sitting around, and luckily it was mostly clean, so we cleaned it out. What we have here is about eh, close to eight inches of substrate. Now, I'm going to flash something on the screen. I actually mixed up my own substrate for these guys. I wanted something that would really hold the burrows together well, and I heard that they do prefer substrate that has a little clay added. So what we have in here is a mixture of cocoa fiber, peat, and some excavator clay. So I would say if I had to go for percentages, it was probably about 40% cocoa fiber, 40% peat, and then 40% of the excavator clay. It's 20%. You said 40, 40, 40. Yeah, 40, 40, 40. 40, 40, 40. <laughs> it's late. I don't do math, right? 
40, 40, 40. 33, 100, 40, 40. I go maximum effort 120% <laughs> into go. the substrate. Uh, my brain shot. 40, 40, 20, but it's probably closer to like 45, 45, 10. You don't want to go crazy with the excavator clay. I did experiment with it ages ago when I started getting into scorpions. And what I found is that if you don't mix stuff with it, a lot of stuff with it, it can turn into like concrete, which isn't great. So what I found is this stuff packs down beautifully. It's firm. You can put, you know, make holes in it and it'll hold the shape of it. So that's what I want. And I put some crumpled up leaf litter up here on top. So hopefully what'll happen, we're going to give it a starter burrow. We're going to use the back of Billy's spoon because she loves when I do that. <laughs> make a little starter burrow in there, maybe another one. I don't know if they'll use it, but I want to give this one a chance. Yeah, we'll just do two. I hope it doesn't use a corner one, but we'll see. Because what they do is they, they lead little web leads out sometimes, and they make the little their uh, trap doors, and then when things come by, they go grab them. So you want enough floor space to make sure you give them spot the web if they're going to web, and enough depth to get down in there, and hopefully it will do its thing, because that is a big spider. We actually have my son, Roan, come up here, because he's been kind of interested in these guys to check them out before we started shooting. So what we're going to do first is we're going to set up the Lephistus Cowl Wang. Again, same type of substrate in here, the 40-40-40 mixture because we go 120%. I'm giving Billy the eye right now. Um, same mixture of substrate in here. Moist substrate. Obviously, these are ones that need some moisture. I put a little starter burrow in there just in case, some crumpled up leaf litter. This is a two-quart container, one of those mainstay containers you get from Walmart. I think these would be really good for them because they'll allow some depth, a little bit of floor space because these guys are a little bit smaller. So let's get these out. Which one is this? The Right there. Perfect. I did open this one up to see kind of where the spider was, and we did find it. And it's right there. So we're going to go. What we're going to do is we, we're not going to probably. Oh, he's moving around. We're probably not going to see this one again afterwards. I'm hoping to do some feeding videos of them once I get them established. Whoa. Aw. This one's pretty good size, too. I don't know if you can see that. It is right in there. I'm going to flash. Let me see if the light's working. I can get a flashlight in there. Love the coloration of those. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's fantastic. Just gorgeous spiders. You can see that plating on the abdomen right in there. It almost looks like the segments of a scorpion, which I believe is what gives them their... Beautiful. Get some good images here because I got a funny film. We're not going to be seeing them much after that. All right. And I told Billy we're going to pause on these a little bit just to get some shots of them so that hopefully I'm going to make another little hole right in here. And obviously, this is good ventilation because it's already sort of dry out a little bit in the top. What I tried to do is put Moisture levels on the bottom, dryer up top to kind of encourage that burrowing. So I meant to look up whether or not they can climb glass or plastic. I don't think they can, but we don't ever want to be surprised. So let's use this. There we go. Sorry, buddy. That wasn't that far of a drop for anybody that freaks out. There it is, right in there. What I'm gonna do is just spray down the side of this a little bit in case it wants to get a drink. And just spray down some, whoop. There it is over in the corner. And I think this will be a good size for it. I think it's probably close to full grind. I believe the females get to be about two inches or so. There it is. Gorgeous. All right, let's leave this poor thing alone. And I will obviously keep it. Should I leave the moss in there? Uh, move it to the side just in case. I'm dying to see these guys do their thing. Oh, this is what they were talking about with a trap door in it. Unfortunately, I must have plucked the whole trap door out, but um, it'll be able to construct a new one in there. Do they need water dishes or no? No water dishes. I, I will probably put little water dishes in because I'm obsessive with that, but they spend most of their time. I'm assuming they probably come out at night. I will double check on that one, but nothing in there yet, but I do have a little bowl of form just in case. All right. Next we have Euronatus, Lephistus or Nautis, or Species or Nautis because 
Not quite sure which ones are. Oh, it's this one right here. Is this one we didn't find? Yeah, you thought I was behind the paper, I think. All right, this one may be in its home. Oh, there it is. All right. Actually, let me spray this ahead of time. Nah, didn't really spray on you. Did it? No. <laughs> All right. So it must be in there. Just make sure. Oh, oh no, it's not right oh, there. Yeah. Yep. You fooled me. Yeah, I don't know if you're going to be. I'll try to get the flashlight on it. This one's a little more the size I thought it was going to be. No armored booty. All right, let's get that one in here. Get a little hole right in the middle. Stuff packs down wonderfully. I'm gonna, I gotta find a place to get the Exavir clay for a little cheaper because um, right now when you buy it for like Petco or something, it's super expensive. No, you can't live on the spoon. There we go. That one's probably inch and a half, maybe. Oh my lord, they're gorgeous. It's like bluish almost. Yeah, there's something about the pattern. I was reading up on them, and there's something about the patterning that makes them very difficult to detect, even when they're out of their burrows. It like throws off the eye and makes them blend in. The colors are obviously supposed to blend in the forest soil and the browns and leaves and stuff. Beautiful. All right. Let's get this bad mama jam over here. Put this on the shelf where it will reside. I was trying to figure out where my other Krapel's enclosure was, and I forgot that the uh, Tenebrosis is in it. Oh. It just clicked when I went over to put this on the shelf, because they're going to be on the same shelf as that one. And this one, I don't know how much playing around we're going to do with this one. We're not going to be playing around with it. We're going to play with it. Billy wants to handle it. I'm just kidding. Anybody that's never watched my videos, <laughs> I never handle I want to make that very clear. It was a joke. We'll get the views up. <clears throat> Put the, the thing of me, like the little what it, the YouTube, when they put the pictures of themselves with like the shocked faces yeah. and then the spider <laughs> in the background. I got my face eaten off by a Lephistus species. Love me. <laughs> this is the problem, like doing these after work is I just don't loopy. have the energy. Don't have the sensor. All right, we're going to try to drag this one out. If this is a species, Jarajirian or Jarajiji or something. There's, there's two different names. Oh, I don't have my notes. I got to look up what that is, too. All right, so what we're going to do is... Well, just like slide out? Yeah. I think this will be a good sign. I was a little worried this might be... I guess you could probably go bigger. No, 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 don't do that. All right, hold on. This is one of the things they do. There we go. All right, try to get shots of that one. Let this me know thing if climbed up the glass, I'm going to scream, by the way. It shouldn't. So I don't reassuring. think they're very, they, it sh I, I, I'm guessing on this one, but with a species that's 
burrows the way this one does, I wouldn't think it would be able to, but and I also don't think that's where it's going to head, even if it does, even if it can. What, you should get the flashlight on just in yeah, case. see what the color, the color might show up a little better. Mm. I'd really like for you to move a little bit. Let me get that. Me the spider. No. <laughs> spider. Sorry. Um, let's get this. There you go, you little armored maniac. Gorgeous. All right, let me see if I can hit it from here. How's that? No, no. no this doesn't. That was terrible. Hmm? Hmm? No? Mm -hmm. It's, it's blue. It's beautiful. It's blue. Well, I think there's supposed to be more of a black coloration. This one's probably. No, she's going to sit there and play dead. So we're going to let this one settle in because I don't want to be transported there. I obviously want to be left alone. And this is going to be it. I'll probably never see it again, I, except for hunting. So what we hope will happen is she'll, maybe she'll adopt this one here. Make a little trap door. They make beautiful trap doors where you can't even, somebody's going to yell at me for sticking my fingers. Yeah, I was just going to say, that thing is um, I just want to make sure I don't overdo it with this up. But what they make really, really beautiful hidden trap door. Like you can't see them at all. And then they pop out, grab them. They're so quick. All right. Lephistus Jarajan. Something like that. Beautiful. All right. So we'll probably stop there. I don't think we're going to rehouse the... Let me just open one of these up and see if this is dry. If this It doesn't look like it's dry, does it? No, this is... Because I may want to do the paper towel method with these. And for anybody wondering, it's not, it's not going to be permanent. It's just until they put on some size. Because I know people... A lot of people that don't know about keeping spiders, they see you put them in something like a vial. They see you put, you know, paper towels in and they go, that's terrible. Why would you even raise that beautiful spider in something like that? They don't understand that it's for the spider's own good. It does appear to be fairly dry. We'll see. I might put them in something a little different. All right. So there we go. The Lephistus. Have been rehoused. We may do the other ones on camera. We may not because it may come down to me just leaving them in there and changing the enclosure a little bit. We'll see how it goes. But incredibly excited to finally have these. Really like something I've wanted for a long time. And again, we're trying to branch out a little bit. No, she's like, please get me out of here. I made a burrow for you if you want to go over there. All right, she's hiding. We're going to cover it up. But uh, really excited to raise these. Hopefully get some good footage to put up of them hunting because it really is amazing. And uh, just super excited to have them. So there we go. Lephista species. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you, Fiona. All right. So guess what? We decided we'd show it. I figured after the fact, I went downstairs and I'm like, if I don't show rehousing these, people are going to go nuts. So we will rehouse them. I'm not doing the paper towel thing. I've decided what we got here is dry substrate in the bottom. I'm going to pull out the sphagnum moss, find the spider, snip it with my aquarium scissors here, and just put a little piece of sp sphagnum moss in, and they should be able to build their webs around that. And that's pretty much my walking area. I had a little sphagnum. I had a leaf. It was in there. Yes, it was a little harder to find sometimes, but it did just fine. So let's pull this out here. I don't know where this one is. Where are you, little booger? Right there. All right. Oh, there it is. Okay. So we're going to do. We might not get good shots of these because they're so small. Let me just make sure it's not on there. Yeah, let's not cut the spider. <laughs> oop. No, oop, 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 oop. Oh, yeah, there it is. Oh, my God. It's tiny. All right. So I'm second guessing this already, but this is the walking area, right? Nope. Rufus Sinilis. Rufus Capillus. Some people say they can't find their spider and didn't get packed. This is why, because it's so small yep. and it hides in the moss. 
So what I'm going to do I'm, I'm already thinking the paper towels would have been there. <laughs> Little guy. Oh, he's so cute. All right, one down. We'll see how this goes. Maybe we'll do paper towels later. <laughs> this one's a little bit. I think the problem is I, I, that's the only one I didn't see. The other ones are a little bit larger. Yeah, yep. This is the Walkinary. You got the right one. Phew, nope. There's the Walkinary. Sorry. Are oh, you so cute? I get it now. I get why everybody's so enamored with them. I mean, for me, it, it just for a while, I avoided them only because it was like I was hearing about them all the time, and I just I was like, all right, people are keeping them. People know what to do with them. They don't need me, and they just weren't something I was like particularly over the top interested in. But now, I got my girl walking airy. I think it's a girl. We'll say girl. Um, I get it. There we go. This was a good start size. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Dang it all. I'm trying to get this to lay down a little bit. Right, we'll leave it like that. Oh, jeez, Louise. That walking area. And then I think this one was a little larger too, right? Yeah, it's right down there. With a little bow. And this is the Volcanicus. Yeah, the Volcanicus is a little tiny too. Oh yeah. Now if you're here, I'll do. Cute little booger. Adorable. And Volcanicus is in there. So there we go. And just to be clear, I absolutely love the little velvet spiders. You know, there was some confusion. Apparently people, I think a lot of it was the people didn't listen to the podcast and listen to other things and realize I said they were amazing. And I do want to point out that the podcast was all about the care for one. So obviously I like them enough to get them to do the care thing, but they are really cool spiders. So there we go. Three velvet spiders. Look forward to growing these little guys or gals up. And obviously I'll keep people, I'm, I'm glad I can raise more of them up so I can talk more about the care of them because there does seem to be some confusion out there because they're supposed to be kept bone dry. And I was, it scares the heck out of me to keep anything that small bone dry. It goes against everything that I've done tarantula keeping, but they do need a bone dry. I don't even mist it down. They get their, their juices from their prey, their moisture from their prey. But I think some people freak out and I've heard from a couple people now, they're like, yeah, I kept the bone dry and I was afraid it was going to die because it didn't have moisture. So I started wetting things down and then they eventually die on them. So definitely keep them bone dry. And oh, there they go. Look at one right there. The walking area, right? It's a pretty good size one. I'll definitely keep people updated. And this is something I want to do some more care information on because obviously they're very popular. People want to hear about it. And I've had people ask me for a while why I don't keep them so I can do some care stuff on. So here we go. We got these three here. We got my other one that's doing great. And I adore the little boogers. So again, a huge thanks to the crew at Fear Not Tarantulas, Evan and Emma, and obviously Tanya. I really appreciate it. I've been buying them from them for years. They're, we're friends with them. Billy's work with them. It's, it's, I don't want this to come across as a review because it's unfair to do a review from somebody that you're actually friendly with. So put that one out there. But when I send people their way, they always come back and tell me how well they're treated. So I really like that. It gives me the confidence to know that if people go there, pick up spiders, they're going to be taken care of. Now, as far as these guys, the velvet spiders have said, settled in very well. They've been webbing. As for the Lephistius species, two of them have gone ahead and dug burrows and have actually done some trap door hunting. And as you'll see in this picture here, it's hard to see it, but you can notice the lead webs, the little trip wires that it has going out from the actual trap door. This is so that if the prey items hit that little web, it triggers them. They know it's out there. They reach out, they grab it. And the other night I tried to get feeding videos of them. 
as I was trying to hold the camera on, they weren't attacking. And as soon as I went to pick it up, put the cover on, I watched the thing come out, grab the roach and go back in. Unfortunately, my camera was already set down, so I didn't catch it, but I will. I promise you that. So the only one that hasn't completely burrowed yet is the Jaro GN. That one has, it's using one of the burrows, the pre-started ones I have, and it's kind of sitting inside of it, but it hasn't burrowed or created its trap door yet. So fingers crossed that happens soon because they won't eat usually until they get those trap doors made. So I'll obviously keep people updated on that. But again, incredibly excited to work with these and more of the Arisa species. I think now that we're a decade into Tom's Big Spiders, we're branching out a bit. I always purposely made it Tom's Big Spiders, not Tom's Tarantula. A, because that was kind of corny, and B, because I figured I'd be branching out into other spiders. And now I think I'm at that point in my keeping where I do want to see what else is out there and hopefully continue to make good, honest, and accurate husbandry videos for those folks out there that are interested in keeping the same species. So that will do it for this one. As always, if you liked it enough to subscribe, very much appreciate. Click the little circle up in there. I'm going to put a couple other videos down in here, probably my walk and area video down here. Take the time to comment. I'll take the time to respond. Just know it can take me a couple days because I tend to get behind because I'm busy. Guys, stay safe. Catch you all next time.